Вы видели ветер? Вы все его видели. Ветер всегда вокруг нас. Мы его чувствуем, но не всегда видим. Ветер — это движение невидимых молекул вокруг нас. Эти молекулы перетекают из зоны повышенного атмосферного давления, где холодно, в зоны пониженного, где тепло, тем самым заполняя пустоты между собой. Посмотрите, здесь ветер прекрасно виден. Дело в том, что свет проходит через нагретый воздух, и поэтому изображение искажается, и мы можем увидеть ветер. Но почему это так важно? Чтобы уметь контролировать его. Кто боится летать на самолетах? Я одна из вас. Поднимайте руки, не стесняйтесь. Ага, значит, все остальные... Кто не боится? Поднимайте руки. Ага, все остальные воздержались. Хорошо. В любом случае, я сегодня добавлю вам новую фобию. Дело в том, что если пилоты хоть немного ошибутся в оценке бокового ветра, то это может привести к катастрофическим последствиям. Самолет может снести в сторону, он может задеть крыльями взлетно-посадочную полосу, может сломаться стойка шасси. И это при условии того, что у нас пилоты спокойные. По статистике... The statistic is that 40% of all plane disasters happen at the point of takeoff or landing and due to the wrong estimation of the crosswind. Many scientists hunt the wind and try to catch it and to receive some information about it. In order to help the pilots, we will need to try and photograph the wind. I'm one of those scientists and I managed to do it. But first things first, let's start with something simple. I quite often work with such videos. Here we can observe the wind. Do you see it? Mm, hardly, I think. It happens because the human eye can only register 25 to 50 images per second. Also, not everyone's eyesight is that great at such distances. It is, however, interesting that since working on that topic, I started to notice wind in everyday situations. My eyes have adjusted, and sometimes I can see the wind over the roof of the adjacent building or over the leaves of a tree, so I know where to look. But this is why in our work we rely on high-speed video cameras that register 200 images per second. 200 images per second and can record at greater distance. In our case, at two kilometers. So they produce for us the footage like this. Do you want to see the wind now? Do you really want to see the wind now? I can't hear you. Here it is, that's the wind. It's not just some wind, it's the crosswind. And this is how it circulates. It's not just some pictures, it's the result of hard work, mathematical modeling and testing in the real setting. In my work, I don't care which objects are involved, be it a car, a ship or a plane. I just need the object as a background we can extract and visualize just the wind from every photograph and even create a video showing its movement. Now I will tell you how I do it. Here I rely on the help of physics and the fairy godmother of all science, the maths. In order to estimate the direction of the wind, I can calculate the wind speed. The dark areas are the areas of strong wind gusts. The lighter areas mean that the wind is insignificant. I can estimate the direction and the speed of the wind uh, in real time. We found that to do so, you need to uh, separate the whole distance in three segments. The first segment looks like this. Looks like this. You see the large wind gusts here, but it's easily explained by simple geometry. The closer it is to us, the bigger the object appears. Now we can adjust uh, the plane movements according to the wind in that area. The next segment looks like this. Let's adjust the movement of the plane again. And this is the third segment. So we can adjust the movement again. 
Now we plan to position our device at the front of the aircraft. Then the runway becomes our background object. Using the data and performing a complex calculation will allow us to adjust our aircraft and land it safely. Moreover, my method will even help to automate the takeoff and landing process and hopefully will reduce the tragic statistics of plane disasters. Thank you, thank you. While researching on the speed of wind, I noticed that the wind also blurred the image and I can't read the number plate very clear. I tried to combine the images from the high-speed camera. Yes, the overall image became clearer, but you still can't read the number plate. Moreover, a bird in flight became totally unrecognizable. A clear picture would really help in traffic control. Traffic control. It would be useful for plane spotters. Or just imagine how upset a keen bird watcher could be who has been waiting for a rare bird in the bush for hours and, and really, really wanted to photograph it and the picture turns up blurred. So we needed a new approach to the wind studies here. It became clear that one lens in the camera is not enough. So I thought I'd use a number of lenses taking a picture at the same time from slightly different angles. When we take a picture with a one lens camera, we get the overall picture but cannot discern the number plate even if we edit the picture. Well, it looks like that. You can't improve it at all you won't be able to read the number plate. However, if you use a number of lenses, each of which will take a picture of the object at the same time, and then combine them to one using fairy godmother maths again, the number plate becomes clear. Do you see that? I can see that. And that's great. I'm also happy that you can see that too. So it's not in vain that I work. In order to do that, you will need to have profound knowledge in theoretical physics, programming skills, and loads and loads and loads of patience. However, there is a question here. What should be the suitable size for the lenses? The lenses might be big or small. Moreover, you could use many more than many, and even more lenses. So which system should you apply? The number size of lenses will depend on the distance you want to use it from. So we are trying to create a universal device. You might say, okay, to get a clearer picture, you just need a bigger lens, right? But that can be very, very prohibitively expensive and sometimes still impossible. And one big lens still won't allow you that you will capture a moving object. And my aim, is to make my device accessible for everyone. Not just for professional purposes, but also for our hobbies. And I'm intending to assemble my multiple lens device after I come back from Göttingen. I'll receive the missing parts and we'll start working. Wish me good luck with that, thank you. Thank you, Anna.